Coding qualitative data. Coding is sometimes misunderstood due to the use of the term in quantitative research. Although the term is the same, the processes are very different. Coding qualitative data does not mean reducing it to numbers, rather it is a means of indexing your data. Coding proceeds on the basis of linking diverse observations, statements and so on, connected by common themes and patterns in a manner that enables you to draw all the particular examples together. Coding involves the breaking down of all your data into units, which are then grouped according to their characteristics. As such, it is rather like a filing system. It is important to stress here, while all grounded theory involves coding, not all coding is grounded theory. Again, it is often assumed that because you are coding, you are doing grounded theory. This is not always the case. Ask a consistent and specific set of questions of all the data. What is happening here? What is important? Interrogate all your data systematically. Again, it is important to stress here that the process may be time consuming, but it does pay dividends in the end. The first stage of coding is to trawl through the data to see what is there, what patterns are emerging from the data. When you have any thoughts or ideas, make sure you jot those down as you go along. One tip is to format documents with a wide margin that gives you space to write in. And from this sort of data, you will have developed an initial coding scheme, which has roughly divided up your material into units. The second stage is to repeat the process, refining, expanding or rejecting initial categories. Once you have identified the significant elements in your data, these need to be tagged or coded. A code is essentially a way of identifying significant parts of the data, so it could be in any form of letters or numbers that make sense to you. Most people use codes that in some way describe the content, as that is the easiest option. The point here is to use what is best for you. Coding is both a means of dividing your data into manageable segments, as well as a means of allowing you quick access to the relevant data when you need it. Most coding begins with descriptive labelling and works towards more abstract analytical categories as it progresses. A code can refer to a single word, a phrase, a sentence or even a whole document. Sections of your transcripts may contain multiple codes because you have assigned one code to a piece of text does not prevent you from adding another code to it. A list of codes is often referred to as a coding frame. Now it's time to complete an exercise. Please note that these are not genuine interviews as ethical considerations would not allow interview data to be used in this way. They've been developed purely for research training exercises. The coding sample document needs to be used in conjunction with the transcripts. This gives an example of what a coded document could look like. However, there is no one set way to code data. To some extent, each researcher develops their own system. Open the two interview documents, Interview Transcript 1 and Interview Transcript 2, and read through them. Once you've done that, take a short break, then read through it more closely. When you find something that interests you, ask why, and write down what you think. For example, as I was reading through Interview 1, and came across this question and answer. Question. Just before, you mentioned the social side of sport with the football team. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Answer. That goes way back to school. I was picked for the first team a couple of times and for a while thought I was going to be pulling on an England shirt. But, laughs, I guess every other kid in the team was thinking that. But yeah, it was a part of something. Even when I was in the second team and tagged along, I still had the feeling that I belonged. Then when I went to sixth form college, I joined a team there and that was great. We had a lot of laughs, some good nights in the pub after a match, stuff like that. And then I used to go and watch Aldershot when they played at home, with them being my local team. Now, this is actually a rather complex answer. What I initially picked up on was how important the social side of this was, so I would add notes to that effect. Then, if reading another interview I came across another person voicing similar opinions, I would also note that thus linking the occurrences and comparing the ways in which sport is being talked about. This also leads on to me asking more questions from my data. Why is this individual no longer involved as much as they were? Why are they no longer taking part in team sports but still exercising in a more individualistic way? There are, of course, many reasons why, 
but you'll need to resist the temptation to assume you know the answer and instead look through the data and see if you can unpack the reasons. There are two things you need to note here. First, you're moving away from the initial descriptive coding towards what is known as analytical coding. That is, you are asking questions about what is occurring. Secondly, some textbooks refer to this process as sampling, but what we call it does not really matter, as long as we adhere to the process as follows. Questions are generated by the data and are tested against the data. However, there is an important caveat to be added here, which is that questions may also be generated by other data sources, such as previous research, policy documents and so on, and indeed your own expectations and experiences, so the analysis needs to go further than the data itself. So question the data, for example look at the role of the family and friends, ask what differences gender makes and so on, you may want to make some notes, and print off and look at the document called Coded Interviews, which will give you some idea of what coding can look like. Some tips on coding. Coding is only a means to an end, it should never become an end in itself. Categories often change, so don't be afraid to uncode, merge categories or split them into different ones. There are a number of computer packages that can help your analysis and make the process easier, however they do not do the coding for you.